Hello people and welcome back to SJ's Corner. Today I'm going to be breaking down the first day of practices at the CFL Combine. So, you know, evaluate the wide receivers especially. And by virtue of that, I see some DBs, so I'm going to talk with them or talk about them a little bit. And uh, yeah, see what this prospect's are about, uh, what their strengths, weaknesses, who's standing out from day one, who's showing themselves about. And yeah, what, what type of perform performance they put out today. Um, but yeah, like I said, before we get into the video, slap, uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video right now. And yeah, let's get into it. Um, so the practice uh, yesterday, because right now I'm recording, it's about an hour and a half away from the next practice. Uh, yesterday, the practice was split into two uh, parts. First part of the practice was mostly footwork and they worked on the gauntlet as well. So we got to see who was more comfortable in their footwork and who had the softest hands, who were comfortable catching the ball while running full speed. Um, and second practice, they had more of a competition during one-on-ones and past Skelly. So yeah, let's go to the first practice and evaluate that real quick. Um, like I said, footwork drills, who stood out um, who stood out on that drill the most? Definitely AK Gasama was showing himself about <clears throat> as I expected. Again, I'm gonna further notice I've known this kid since 17, 18 years old, so I may have a bias. Yeah, sure, but I'm also um, a wide receivers coach and I played the position, so I know a crisp foot um, footwork receiver when I see uh, such. He get me so he was looking good in the footwork drills as expected he's more of a smaller receiver five eight uh five nine and he i think weighed in at 158 which was a little bit lighter than expected but he's still a really strong kid don't let the size fool you you get me um but yeah he looked good in the footwork drills been working on that all his life basically at all for recent as well He's trying to make sure that's a staple that he showed the scouts and the GMs and owners. If the owners were out there, you get me. Um, who also looked good in that drill was uh, the receiver out of Quebec, Covent Clercius. If I am mispronouncing this, I am sorry. <laughs> um, but please feel free to correct me. You get me. Um, but yeah, he's a bigger receiver, 6'2". He weighed in at 217. He also ran well on Thursday as well. So... So far, he's looked really good. You get what I'm saying? No, I won't say like go crazy, but you know, like in terms of performances, like he's been really consistent. You get me? And he was dropping his weight. He was diligent with that. Showed burst, catching the ball as well out of the drill. Looked really good. And of all the bigger guys, he looked the best for sure. You get me? Smaller guys, I'm expecting to do well in this sort of drills, you know, but he showed no differences you get me like he was really good in that full drill um when we moved on to the gauntlet i believe in my opinion the receiver that showed the best hands and very comfortable uh, when catching a football was the guy out of bemidji the state um del duncan busby also a bigger guy um six one about waiting at 205 so it looks really comfortable i didn't think he looked like as one of the best receivers in the footwork drills, but when it came to the gauntlet, you could definitely see he's comfortable catching that ball. Doesn't matter where it is, he's snatching it, and it was soft. Like some guys, like they were catching the ball and it was hell loud. You know, like you don't want to, you don't want to seem like you're fighting the ball. Like for example, the Laval, the Laval, Laval guys, <laughs> kind of don't speak. The Laval guys, I think. It's not like they dropped a lot of footballs or anything, but it seemed to me they were fighting the ball a little bit. Like Antoine dropped one, but to be fair, was a heater. <laughs> and when you're catching soft, soft balls from other quarterback, and he's one that throws you off guard with a different type of speed, it can cause a drop. So I get that. And also preface this by it's the first time of this guy's wearing pads in months. Like if you're a Canadian a player and you played in U Sports, your season probably ended up uh, in November. You get me? And this is March away. And so fair warning. I understand that fact as well because I played in the in that league as well. So, um, Metal a little bit catching a ball close to his chest to his face mask, where normally you'd want to see your hands really extended to show how comfortable you were. You can definitely see a difference between Duncan Busby when he was catching it and those guys. I'll just say that. 
and uh, I think I posted some of those videos as well on my social media. Um, I'll post the link on my Instagram uh, for, for my Instagram in the bio as well, so you can go you know judge for yourself if I'm saying the truth or I'm being fair. You get me. So yeah, that was it for the first part of practice. Then it took a little bit of a, like a 15 minute break, just cooled down, ate some food, drank some um, water or some fluids, whatever they got uh, going on at the CFL. Um, and we moved on to the second part of practice, which, as I said, was more of a competition-based practice. So they started off with some light full work, obviously re working releases off the line uh, with the receiver uh, receiver coach. I believe out there was uh, Roosevelt. I'm going to go check later to go make sure I'm, I'm not um, getting his name wrong. But he used to play with the, the Riders, and now he's with the Ticats as a coach. When it got into the one-on-ones, okay, I'll be honest, it was a bit on the woman. If I had to rank that session as a whole for re receivers and quarterbacks, I'll give it a two. And like I said, I played the position before. I've seen a lot of one-on-ones. I'm expecting receivers and quarterbacks to a lesser degree to dominate that session because it is an offensive session. You are supposed to win your matchups. You know, the entire session, only one, only one, no. Yes, only one deep ball got completed between Pascal and one on ones. No deep balls got completed in one on one session. So that is not good. You get me? And I don't think that's totally on the receivers, I would say, because they seem to be off um, with the QB. So maybe that's something they need to work on. Just, you know, getting in each other's brain, uh, just pick up on what each other's thinking. And <clears throat> if you're a quarterback in this, like, again, this is a job interview, right? Like, I, I get that. So maybe that's why you be nervous. But just calm down. You're not trying to do too much, especially one-on-ones. Just give the receiver a chance. You know what I'm saying? Put the ball within a yard, two yards of them. Let them go make a play. You know, um, there's a lot of balls where receivers gain separation. The ball was, they're expecting the ball on the inside. And the balls ended up over here making the catch a lot more difficult. You know, and I think one thing that gets lost in the shuffle here is, like, when you're a quarterback... You think everyone's trying to see how strong your arm is all for you can throw it. But one thing that gets lost in the shuffle is how you throw a catchable ball. Like if your ball is hard to catch, ain't no receiver will really want to catch that ball. You get what I'm saying? So you need to make completions. That's the goal of the game. <clears throat> get completions so you can move the ball down the field and obviously score. You get me? So don't put too much pressure on yourself. Just take it easy. Take your step your your drop back whatever you do throw on time but throw a catchable ball it's not that deep i promise you you get me so give these guys a chance so they can get evaluated the receivers because when you're getting bad balls like how well can we tell of a player like, like a good player you are it's it's tough you get me so give them a chance and that's why i'm not gonna kill the receivers too much on this one you know but the dbs they had a great day as far as their concert they would not care you try to talk to them oh that was a bad ball so my problem, you get me, um, especially Gerald Cummins. I thought he was great today in terms of his footwork. He was smooth. He was comfortable. He was patient. Didn't look like it was getting flustered at all. Moves were not working on him. You get me. So he basically had his mind made up on what he's willing to take away and just working off what else the receiver is doing. But he had, a, he had a great show in the one. It looked really good. Like, he knew what he was doing type shit. Like, that's how it looked when he was playing out there. Um, So, moved on to the Pascal session. QBs improved a little bit, I would say. Um, now, it's kind of tough to tell the QBs apart because they're far away from me. So, I can't really pick their numbers. And they were in this jersey and their numbers. <laughs> it's, it's hard to tell, okay? So, the first QB up in the Pascal session, I posted that on the YouTube as well. He came out chucking deep balls, and it was actually some pretty balls. Um, first one to AK Gasama, AK got behind his um, DB two three yards of separation, but he lost the ball in the lights. He couldn't he couldn't find it, but that ball dropped within two yards of him. So that's a good ball. You get me? Like that's the type of ball you want. Like give me a chance to go make a play. But hopefully he finds that ball today in the next practice and makes a play on that, like he's shown in his tape. You get me? Next play. This is what Jaquan Bloomfield came through with the best route of the day, in my opinion. It was a sick post route. DB was in pit bill technique, playing the quarterback. But I don't know if he paid as much attention to Jaquan as he should have been paying. Um, Jaquan came off the ball, 
full speed, gave him a stick to his blind side, and DB obviously shifted, and that low half a second where he's moving over, Jaquan has got the inside, and he's sprinting toward the, the post. Perfect ball in stride, touchdown, you get me. So I think that was the play of the day, in my opinion. But yeah, man, a lot of guys were flashing, but I want to see more consistency. Now, I think, again, like I mentioned at the top of the video, the person that was most consistent, I would say, is Corvens Clercius out of Montreal. Nothing too crazy, but, you know, to a receiver, a former receiver like me and a receiver coach, I noticed those things, and it's like, that's what I want to see in the receiver, consistency, doing your job, and when it's required to make a crazy play, they make a crazy play, you get me? Like, some guys in the Skelly session, especially, trying to make diving catches where I thought, you didn't need to leave your feet. You, you're just making the catch a lot more um, difficult than it should be, you get me? And that's kind of telling me, like, are you really comfortable in catching the ball? like in different type of locations you know that's a question you know so if you don't have to leave your feet don't you know if you can snag that ball and keep running that's what you want to do like don't try to do too much don't try to play up to that occasion you get me do what you would do normally and what we what you would how you would catch the ball in a game like situation you get me um so yeah that's what i want to see just confident <clears throat> in your abilities you get me so um hopefully the receivers and the quarterbacks have a better day today but for day one dbs will be happy better pascal session for the receivers and quarterbacks but you know like i said they will expect more and want more for themselves especially when jobs are off for the grabs you know coaches are out here cfl personnel everyone judging your every single move you know so you want to put your best foot forward man separate yourself and push yourself towards the top of that draft boy you get me so um if you enjoyed this video go ahead leave me a like comment if you think i've been unfair or you think i've been fair you see the videos i've posted the scaly and one-on-one -on -one session let me know if there's someone i missed as well um but yeah without further ado i'll see you guys on the next video and i'll be going out there again this afternoon again and yeah more content coming your way okay guys and Hope you guys have a lovely, lovely day. Peace.